thank you very much for having uh, invited me. I do feel like a random element here. Um, <laughs> but um, so what I'll try to do is to explain uh, what, I, what I try to do and maybe in, in very high level terms and maybe suggest what you know, computer science has to, has to offer yeah, in very high level terms. Um, so, uh, so I've been interested in, in uh, learning for a long time, machine learning for a long time. And I will present it in a very uh, high-level way as being a solution to, to many problems. And uh, so at the most uh, ambitious level, um, we could ask, what, what if we want some theory of everything, some mechanistic views of life, some, some theory which explains everything? So of course, we've had uh, physics for a long time. And we know that we, know, uh, we understand much about elementary particles. Uh, but if you ask a question about, say, psychology or economics, then this physics doesn't seem to be that useful um, because somehow the particles are too far away. Um, but um, if, um, as I'll try to su suggest, there's an argument for saying that um, everything in living things uh, was acquired by some kind of process like learning or evolution, which are, say, are about the same, then um, this kind of theory is somehow more closer to phenomena. So if I can explain uh, the algorithms which we use to learn in our brains, then somehow that's much closer to our behavior than the elementary particles are, what is made of. So if we have a, a good theory of, of high-level computational phenomena in the brain, that's much closer to, to behavior. Um, so very roughly, um, I've got 20 minutes. I'll say something, something about how computer science works. I'll say a little about what, what machine learning is. I'll say a little bit about what, what I think biological evolution is. And this may all be a bit theoretical. But um, w if one goes through this, then one can also ask a question which I think everyone may be interested in, and is a scientific question, is you know, what can be automated? So what kind of jobs can be done by machines and, and will disappear? OK, so this is a kind of scientific question. and. Uh, I think we can say something about it. So for example, if you hear that uh, a, a computer has beaten the best Go player, you know, should you be surprised? Um, if you hear that computers can translate from uh, one lang language to another in a plausible way, should you be surprised? Uh, so some insights from computer science uh, tell you roughly what to expect, I think. So um, OK, so what is computer science in, in three minutes? Um, well, uh, it's not a science of machines, but it's a science of mechanisms. So a mechanism is like a procedure, a recipe. It's anything which happens uh, step by step. Okay, so uh, so if, in, if you're interested in biology or psychology or economics, and the level of, of explanation you're looking for is really some really tangible step by step thing. So if you're interested in a theory of economics which really says that prices have reached this level, because you know, these decisions were made by all the, all the participants at a different instance, then that's a mechanism, and computer science does that kind, that kind of thing. And uh, historically, this started with uh, Turing 80 years ago. And basically, he said that um, what he's hypothesized that what, whatever is mechan mechanistic com computable, and this is what we mean intuitively in a, in a common sense sense, um, is exactly what's computable in a very theoretical mathematical sense, which, which he defined. And so this was a hypothesis, but this has stood the test of time for 80 years, and this isn't seriously questioned by anybody. So it's one of the well best founded parts, parts of science. Um, so, um, so what's happened since is that the study which uh, has followed is, has become more quantitative, so how many steps does it take to do a computation, how efficient it is. So that's much more difficult. It's occupied lots of smart people over many decades. Um, but the kind of the upshot is, is that for, you know, for people in the uh, real world, is that um, if you're interested in phenomena, say in psychology or economics or whatever else, and your theory is a really mechanistic one, it's a step-by-step -step one, then computer science has something to offer because um, Computer science says what kind of mechanisms are, are, are possible. So for example, if for economists, uh, I think Nash equilibria 
uh, have been an important concept for, for a long time. But um, again, computer scientists have, have, go, have some comments on this in that while uh, Nash equilibrium is a very good theory of when you reach equilibrium, but the question is, is there any viable way of actually reaching these equilibria in a plausible number of steps in any, with any mechanism? And, uh, so, and that's kind of in doubt. Um, so the issue isn't just whether um, game theory models humans faithfully, but the question is whether game theory itself, or this aspect of game theory, is a theory which is kind of really predictive. Anyway, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, OK, so, I'm t uh, so let's go to my second topic, machine learning. Um, so just very roughly, I just want to indicate that there is a theory behind machine learning. Obviously, machine learning is an enormous field with many aspects. I'll just uh, have one slide here. So the typical, uh, typically what happens in machine learning is uh, supervised machine learning. So a machine is given examples of pictures where some show uh, elephants and some others don't show elephants, and the machine is supposed to learn how to recognize new pictures by whether it shows elephants. So the real world is this uh, blue circle, and you're shown, say, four examples of elephants and three, four examples of non-elephants with plus or minus signs, and your machine is supposed to generalize to new examples. So, um, so the machine learning algorithm will, having seen examples, will generate some hypothesis, H, which uh, will for future examples and you know, classify whether, whether what it sees is an elephant or not. So this is what machine learning is, is good at. Um, so learning from examples um, and all the uh, much uh, uh, publicized uh, examples of machine learning in the last 10 years have been successful because it can do this well. Um, but um, so I'll just say that there is a theory of this. This is this probably approximately correct notion of learning which just summarizes what you expect uh, are desirables. So clearly you want the error to be small. Your hypothesis shouldn't differ from the reality uh, too much. The second requirement is that you shouldn't assume anything about the world. So the, um, these machine learning methods should be very, very general. You know, they shouldn't only work if the world is convenient for you. And then the third is a quantitative requirement that the amount of computation you have to put in, the number of examples you need should be feasible. You shouldn't need an infinite number. And so, for example, the errors you expect in classifying future examples should be um, under control. And certainly some of the um, much publicized results, say, of, of Google, where they take enormous data sets uh, from the web, uh, millions, and get good results, are kind of uh, reflect this fact that if, you, if you've got a lot of, lot of data, then you expect to get better predictions. Um, OK, so this is a kind of learning. It's a definition of what you expect, what, what are the requirements, what, what you need to do before you declare success. OK, topic two. Um, OK, so topic three is, um, let's discuss Darwinian evolution. Um, and so here, um, so I'm not, you know, so, uh, I'm not debating whether all living things on Earth are, are related or not. I think we are. We are biologically related to what we're going to have for dinner. Um, but um, there are some problems in that if... Um, so Darwin wasn't that specific on whether he had a mechanism for evolution. And so you'd think that if he had a mechanism, then you could program out this mechanism and somehow um, explain how, given the time available on Earth or the, or the universe, you could evolve life forms as interesting uh, as we are, okay? And there is no such a simulation. And uh, so maybe he wasn't smart enough. Um, but in fact, uh, no one else has done this either. Um, so, um, so somehow there's, there's, there's some uh, incompleteness in the formulation. So what I've been interested in is to formulate uh, evolution as a problem of, of machine learning um, that um, Evolution is some sort of learning process. And on the surface, machine learning, as I described it, is very different from how we're brought up to think about evolution. And, um, and there are two main uh, objections. So the first one is that um, in machine learning, there seems to be a, a goal. You're trained to recognize elephants, and someone tells you when you have an elephant, whereas we're 
brought up to think that evolution is some random pointless process which just goes on. Um, but, uh, um, but in reality, one can make a point that evolution can't be that pointless either, and that it has a goal, and that it's what it seeks to achieve is to increase fitness. So um, to just like a machine learning program is, 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 uh, is given an elephant and says, good, uh, this is what an elephant is, uh, life forms, individuals also have this training that those who haven't learned to be fit die, okay? But it's the same kind, same kind of fitness. Um, and, uh, and to make machine learning, uh, to make evolution a special case of machine learning, you do have to restrict the machine learning algorithms to things which Darwin allowed. And basically, uh, what Darwin allowed is that um, your new hypothesis, which in biology is the, is the genome, is generated independent of experience, but then many are generated and they're checked out on which is the most successful against experience. So Darwinian evolution is like a, very, like a restricted kind of machine learning. Um, okay, so one can uh, uh, do this, okay? Um, so, um, so what one has then is a, is a kind of unified view of both learning and evolution. Um, and then one can make this claim that um, you know, everything within us, um, if, you, if you believe in mechanistic explanations, we either learned since we were born or we learned uh, during evolution. Okay, so, um, so everything, all aspects of our biology and our brains, we've learned, you know, moment of birth is no great event, it's just slightly different kind of, kind of learning. And then you can also draw some conclusions from this general ideas that, um, for example, the nature-nurture di divide, which people have debated for a long time, is somewhat ill-founded Ill because, um, you know, the kind of things we learn uh, before birth and after birth, the, the nature of these things isn't that different. And it's, it's not surprising that it should be so difficult to define exactly what you know at birth and what you learn afterwards. Okay, so, um, okay, so, so lastly, if you add all this together, then you can start thinking about this question of, um, you know, what, is it, what, it, is, what is it, it is that we hope, that we can expect to be automated, what can machines do, say in practice. Um, and again, so what I'm addressing in this last slide is um, the kind of tasks which we've been successful in the last 10 years, which are all through machine learning. Okay, so, um, so a very rough uh, definition, which may, you may or, or may or may not find helpful, is that if you're looking at uh, your neighbor's job and want to find out whether it's going to be automated, you can ask two questions. Um, so is it uh, solvable routinely by, by trained humans? So can you just train someone to, to do it? Um, and uh, the second question is whether the uh, data you need to train the person is somehow, somehow available. Okay, so, um, okay so, so, so the kind of things where, um, things we, which we can do but is hard to do by computers at the moment, kind of knowledge we have, is so-called common sense knowledge. So what, so what we learn as babies crawling on the floor about touch and feel of things, like if I squeeze a cup of paper cup of hot coffee, what will happen? So we all know, but it's pretty hard to look that up on the web. Okay, it's also difficult to, to argue that from, from Newtonian physics. So some knowledge which is obvious to us is in fact hard to um, get in, into computers, um, but uh, a, lo a lot is. Um, so um, so what I'm saying here is uh, what the um, uh, thing at the bottom says is that. Uh, what I'm saying here is, is close to a truism. So clearly, if, if all the data which drove uh, evolution and all the data we use in learning as individuals was suddenly made available, available to a com computer, and we um, knew the algorithms evolution uses and our learning uses, then the, what I say in red is, uh, is a truism. Um, but um, most of this isn't available to us. But nevertheless, we can automate these things because somehow our, our machine learning technology is, is pretty powerful and can uh, get around uh, many issues. Um, so, uh, okay, so this is where I like to stop. Okay.